Evolution of the Deep, a scuba diver's journey, part one, oceans of the past. Hello, I'm Callum. I'm here because last year I began my scuba diving journey. Today I invite you to join me on a new journey, an evolution of the deep. Part one, oceans of the past, 3.5 billion years ago. As a scuba diver, have you ever wondered what it'd be like to dive in a prehistoric ocean? In the beginning, Evidence shows that life probably began in the oceans at least 3.5 billion years ago. Photosynthesis began more than 2.5 billion years ago. But it took hundreds of millions of years for enough oxygen to build up in the atmosphere and ocean to support complex life. The first organisms were known as single cell microbes. For nearly 2.3 billion years, life consisted of these alone. Then about 1.2 billion years, more com complex multi-celled organisms evolved. Precambrian. The first ocean life forms were microscopic, so small that they'd been invisible to the naked eye. Later, bizarre and alien-like creatures ruled the oceans. Even creatures more familiar to us like sharks, whales and octopuses have a long past with ancestors very different from from other creatures roaming the seas now. Some species ex existed for a moment before they went extinct, while others slowly adapted to the changing seas. Evolution takes time, and when the oceans change too rapidly for species to respond, mass, mass extinction occurs across the globe. This has happened five times and could happen again. Oceans to Hyden. Between asteroid and comet bombardment, scientists believe enough time passed for vaporised water to condense and settle on the Earth's surface. According to the most recent scientific studies, an ancient, an ancient ocean likely covered the entire planet 150 million years ago, after the formation of Earth. About 4.4 billion years ago, zircon crystals that were dated around this time these crystals can hold up against temperatures that would melt and destroy most of the rocks. And the subset discovery in Australia have Australia have a specific chemistry that indicates the crystals formed through sediment a sedimentary process in a cool, wet environment, what scientists infer to be an ancient ocean floor. Microbes of the Archean the first life forms emerged at least 3.5 billion years ago. These are simple celled, celled microbes that probably lived near hydrothermal vents, places where hot water spewed up from beneath the Earth's crust. And the atmosphere at this point did not contain any oxygen, instead it consisted of methane, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulphide, gases that vented from, a, from the cooling planet through volcanic eruptions. Three billion years ago, a bacterium emerged that could convert sunlight into usable energy. In the process, gaseous oxygen was formed. This, this bluey green microbe was called cyanobacterium, was likely the first photosynthetic organism, and it was a game changer in the story of life on Earth. Over millions of years, oxygen continued to accumulate in the atmosphere. Thanks to cyanobacteria and other photosynthetic organisms, it was this oxygen that would allow complex life to thrive in the millennia to come. Rodinia and the supercontinents have a world take shape. By 650 million years ago, the first supercontinent, Rodinia, formed. It is unclear exactly how big Rodinia was, although it is likely at its core landmass it was the size, it was the land that it that is now North America. The similar shape of locations from today were not the same. Both Asia and Africa split into pieces, Antarctica butted up against India and Australia. The Americas were warped into unrecognisable shapes. On either side of the continents were the Panthalastic and the Pan African Oceans. Paleozoic. During this era, seas flooded and the continents 
receded several times. During the earlier Paleozoic, three small continents, Laurentia, Siberia and Baltica split apart from the rest of the supercontinent Gondwana and formed the Laptius Ocean in between. By the end of the Paleozoic, the supercontinent Pangaea was beginning to take shape. Plants began to grow on land, followed by invertebrates and finally vertebrates. Paleozoic was the time when arthropods, fish, amphibians, mollusks, mollusks, disapids, and synapses began to evolve. Paleozoic ocean life. The one on the far side is a early um, Dunkleodocus. That one's an ammonite, and I'm not too sure about that one yet. Cambrian Explosion. Before the Cambrian Explosion, only primitive life forms existed in the oceans. In other words, all organisms existed without hard body parts for the first 3.5 billion years on Earth. The Cambrian period occurred approximately 542 to 488 million years ago and included the biggest evolutionary explosion in Earth's history. Some researchers think this happened due to a combination of warming climate, more oxygen in the oceans, and the creation of extensive shallow marine habitats. The world's first predators took to scanning the seabed from above or hiding in sediments of the seafloor disguised as disguised and bushes. Most major animal groups, such as mollusks and anthropods, emerged from the Cambrian Explosion. During the Cambrian Explosion, there was an abundance of eukaryotic organisms that swam in the ocean. Ocean life started as sparse and simple. For example, there was a huge amount of life forms that, that made their appearance. Trilobites, brachiopods and gastropods. Climate was milder in the Cambrian period. When oceans split into continents, oh, spilled into continents, shell marine invertebrates are, belie are believed to, to have crawled onto the land. Algae likely existed, but plants didn't. Earth resembled much like a desert, so animals did not fully colonise the continent. The first predators. The largest and most fearsome looking predators to roam the seas during the Cambrian were Armnacarids. The first predators. What sort of traces would the first predators have left behind? We often think of predators using jaws and sharp teeth to rip chunks out of their prey. So maybe we should look for the oldest jaws and teeth. In fact, just last year we learned modern, modern vertebrate jaws date back to 420 million years ago and that teeth appeared 500 million years ago. Paleontologists have collected fossils of predators that existed tens of millions of years ago before teeth evolved. These predators date right back to the first abundance of animal life about 540 million years ago. The Cambrian period, most fierce and Fierce predator clung to life for 30 million years longer than it was previously thought. Fossils from Morocco show the sea creatures known as armlacarids survived long after they had been understood to have gone extinct. Their bodies grew to a length ex excess of one metre. The largest extinction ever in Earth's history is the Permian extinction, an event that occurred roughly 200. 52 million years ago. Scientists estimate that 90% of marine species disappeared over the course of about 60 million years. Their extinction was a response of dramatic changes in the Earth's atmosphere. Massive volcanic eruptions spanning millions of years spewed carbon dioxide and toxic gases into the, from, out from the inner Earth. As the gases accumulated, temperatures rap rapidly fluctuated, oxygen levels plummeted. The oceans became more acidic from acid rain. Ash that blocked the sun initially caused Earth's temperature to plummet, but lava soon burned coal deposits that released greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, raising the temperature. The end of the Permian extinction drastically cut the diversity on 
life on Earth. Some groups went extinct, while a few species in other groups made it through. Sea urchins, once diverse during the Permian, were devastated. Only one species survived. Ammonites, too, were hard hit, but a few did survive. That became the most diverse predators. Hi, I'm Callum. I'm here today because last year I began my scuba diving journey. Today I'm here to invite you on a new journey, Evolution the Deep Part 2. Part 2, Oceans of Today and Into the Future, 2021 and Beyond. As a scuba diver, you might have already been lucky enough to experience our present day oceans, but have you ever thought what they would look like in the future? New beginnings. The, the Cenozoic era, meaning new life, is the current and most recent of the three geological eras in the Phanozoic eon. Around 34 million years ago, the ocean's temperature plunged in response of shifting tectonic plates and dropped in atmospheric carbon dioxide. As the southern, as South America and Australia broke away from Antarctica, oceanic cu currents dramatically changed, affecting marine food webs across the globe. Mammals diversified rapidly, evolving new ways to feed, move about and keep warm in the chill chilled ocean waters. For much of the Cenozoic, a seaway existed between the Pacific and Caribbean that allowed for ocean water and species to move between them. That all changed when the Pacific tectonic plate butted up against the Caribbean and South America plates during the Pleistocene and the Isthmus and Panama began to take shape. This tectonic collision caused volcanic activity and the formation of mountains that stretched from the North America to South America. This caused cooling and continental ice sheet growth, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. The resulting drop in sea level further expanded the Panama land bridge. The Caribbean was cut off from the Pacific. The Atlantic Ocean became slightly saltier and the Gulf Stream strengthened and propelled warm water up from the, up from the equator into the north. Today, the salt, salty water of the Atlantic is a major engine to global ocean circulation. Ecosystems, too, reacted to the closure of the seaway. Cordoned off from the nutrient-rich waters of the, of the Pacific, Caribbean species needed to adapt. The barrier led to cr the creation of new, closely related species, such as the Pacific Goliath Grouper and the Atlantic Goliath Grouper. The lack of nutrients in the waters of the Caribbean resulted in high diversity of corals and algae that we see today. Some species were able to make an adjustment, but others did, did, did not fare so well. Movement of the continents. Tectonic plates continue to move from what we see today. But if you think this is the way things are going to stay, well you're very wrong because tectonic plates never stop moving and we should expect more continental drift and who knows perhaps another supercontinent like Rodinia or Pangaea in a, in a hundred million years in the future from now. Cenozoic The KP extinction marked the end of the Mesozoic era and began the Cenozoic era, the era we live in today. At the beginning of the Cenozoic the world's continents and oceans basin were very similar to those that exist today, though the continents have continued to shift. Marine invertebrates and phytoplankton. The Cenozoic marine ecosystem was populated mostly by those plants and animals and single celled organisms that survived the terminal Mesozoic extinction. Gone were the ammonites and rudists, and many forms of plankton did not survive. The Cenozoic invertebrate group 
that recovered well were corals and shellless cephalopods, squids and octopuses. An example of one life form is Mega Piranha, Big Piranha. It was estimated to grow up to one metre long, although its diet is uncertain. It was probably carnivorous, but its teeth could also have been used for a herbivorous diet. The dimensions of a Mega Piranha compared to a 1.8 meter tall person and smaller variants of the piranha. The reign of the mammals. It is also during the time the two giants of the world came to be. The largest animal ever to live on the planet, the blue whale. Because it becomes so large, to become so large, it requires a special set of circumstances. Bainy whales didn't start to become until roughly 5.3 million years ago the transition between the Miocene and the Pliocene. As the world's waters froze in ice shells, the ocean became saltier. This, in turn, drove large oceanic currents that brought nutrient-rich water up from the depths of the ocean. In combination, these factors created patchy ocean of pockets of nutrients were sparse by miles of food deserts. Whales evolved massive bodies not only to store large quantities of energy, but to also push aside water for long distance travel. Of marine mammals, Destacelia grazed, was gra grazing on kelp and seagrass in the shallows. These four legged, gnarly toothed creatures straddle the marine environment, much like sea seals and sea lions of today but with feet instead of flippers. These are the own, only order of marine mammal to go entirely extinct, and it's likely because sea cows and manatees were better suited for underwater life, and, it, and they got outcompeted for food. The skeleton of a dysmysteria, and what it may have looked like. Whale evolution. Whale evolution is one of the most fascinating examples of evolution, that there is. Whales, like all mammals, evolved from reptiles, amphibians and fish. Thus, over hundreds of millions of years, they left the sea, grew legs, grew fur and evolved lungs. Then they returned to the sea, lost their, well, kept some legs, lost their fur and kept their lungs. It goes from, so right where it starts getting a longer skeleton, and then right there, you can see just above where the um, spine is, you can see a little bone structure. That would have been its hind legs from all the evolution down to the whale. Present day whales, a few facts. Whales are animals, mammals, not fish. They are very friendly, live in big groups called herds. They cannot breathe underwater. They breathe in and out through their blowholes. Whales sleep on top of the water. There are 79 types of whales. These can be divided into two different groups. Baleen whales. They are the biggest types of whales. They have two blowholes. They have no teeth and catch f food in their stringy bones. Common types of baleen whales. Blue whale, bowhead whale, fin whale and humpback whale. The blue whale is the largest animal in the world. It can be up to 33 metres long. The morphology of a baleen whale. The strips of bone are called baleen, and they use that to catch, um, like kind of krill and shrimp. Then they suck all the water out, so then they can swallow it. A few examples and pictures, and the sound of some whales. Toothed whales. They have teeth. They eat fish and plants. They only have one blowhole. White whales, sperm whales, killer whales and narwhals. Facts about some narwhals. They are very secretive creatures. The males have long, have very long to tusks. They live in icy cold waters. The shark evolution. Fossil evidence shows sharks populated the planet before dinosaurs existed. That is more than 400 million years ago. Since the skeleton is of, of a shark is composed of cartilage. The only thing preserved from the prehistoric sharks are their dermal dentals and teeth. 
Exce exceptional cases of preserved skeletons. The first fish appeared on Earth about 510 million years ago. Evolution did its job. And that's when the first prehistoric sharks appeared. The way in which we know them today is believed to be the result of evolution that started about 100 million years ago. Of course, not all sharks that once were on Earth existed, they exist today. Fossils proven that many species have become extinct. Present day sharks, a few facts. A shark is a type of fish. There are over 400 kinds of sharks. Most sharks live in the sea, some live in rivers. On average, sharks are only one metre long. The biggest is the whale shark, which is the size of a school bus. The smallest is the spined pygmy shark, which is the size of a banana. Sharks have no bones, the skeleton is cartilage. They can only swim forward, their skin is rough like sandpaper. A, f a few well known sharks and facts. Great white shark. The great white shark's body is long, has a long and pointed body. They are usually about 4 metres long. It has a white belly. It has three main fins. They eat fish and other sharks. The tiger shark. The tiger shark has a tiger pattern on its back. It is usually 3 metres long. It eats fish, fish, other sharks, turtles and sea lions. Tiger sharks are found in warm seas. The hammerhead shark. It has a thick, wide head. It can be over three metres long. They are found in warm waters. They have a very good sense of smell. And another reason why they have their head like a hammer is because they're one of the most negatively buoyant sharks. So they need a way to kind of give themselves lift. So they use their wide heads as a, as a plain aerofoil to create from water dynamics to help them gain lift in the water while swimming forward. Shark teeth. Sharks can have up to 3,000 teeth at one time. Most sharks do not chew their food because of their teeth just force it back to the mouth, at the back of their throat. Then they gulp it down whole. Their teeth are in rows. When one falls out, another one grows in. Usually have five rows of teeth, which can which the teeth can continually be replenished. Some well-known um, teeth of sharks. The present day and the future. Today, the ocean is constantly being influenced by humans. The development of coastlines and overfishing are causing a significant loss of biodiversity. Pollution from run runoff, oil spills and plastic waste are killing the species at an alarming rate. Car carbon emissions from cars and power plants that provide electricity result in a warming atmosphere due to greenhouse gases, which is melting the glaciers and causing sea levels to rise. Ocean currents are also responding to the fresher and warmer waters. The excess carbon dioxide is dissolving in the water which creates more acidic seas. As the world changes at a rate never been seen before in a geological time period, it is important to understand and reflect upon how past times of change affected life. A dramatic change, changing world often leads to mass extinctions and in some cases it takes millions of years for ecosystems to rebound and repopulate. And there are never and they are never the same again. The oceans will continue to exist. All life that inhabits it will not disappear. But a six ma mass extinction in the oceans would be very hard on humans. The plastic problem. By 2050, the amount of plastic in the oceans will mine more than the amount of fish. There are around 33,600 species of fish, so there is already a lot of fish in our seas, which we know will be a lot of plastic. 
Trash islands are now a lot more common, with the largest and most famous one being the Great Pacific Garbage Patch between the coasts of California and Hawaii. Due to recent efforts to reduce the plastic, the Great Pacific Garbage, garbage Patch has um, halved its amount of plastic that consists of it. There are also microplastics. These are tiny bits of plastic, plastics we can't see. And this can come from things like the breakdown of large plastics, washing our clothes and wear and tear our car tyres on the roads. Nearly every bit of plastic that has ever been made and chucked to waste still exists somewhere in the world today. It takes 500 to 1000 years of plastics to break down or degrade depending on the quality. Not all plastics are recyclable. This is because there are different types of plastics and some of them are worth more money so they get recycled because they're more expensive to produce. Single use plastics make up 40% of the plastics made every year. This plastic is only used once and then thrown away. Plastics have been consumed by land based animals as well as sea life including elephants, hyenas, zebras, tigers and other large mammals in some cases causing death. Over the last 10 years we have produced more plastic than we did in the whole last century. Plastic pollution can be found everywhere on every beach in the world, even tropical islands where no humans are currently living or inhabiting, and has even been found up in Antarctic. A million plastic bottles are brought around the world every minute, that's a lot of plastic bottles. How long do you think it'll take for each item to fully decompose? We've got a plastic bag, we've got a bottle, we've got a phone, we've got a tea bag, we've got a sock, well a woolen sock, an apple, banana, and a magazine. This is gonna be enjoyable this is. <laughs> a banana takes a banana skin takes six weeks, not including the banana inside. An apple core takes two months. A woolen sock takes one year. A plastic bag takes 20 years to fully decompose. A magazine takes 50 years to decompose. A plastic bowl takes 450 years to fully decompose. A phone takes a thousand years to decompose. What can we do before ours? Recycle. Reprocessing the product or some of it, some of its parts to make something else. Reuse. Using the whole product or some of its parts to make something else. Rethink. Look at the whole system for the product and explore ways to improve and consider people and the environment. Reduce. Cut down the amount of energy and or materials used to make the product. Thanks, this brings us to the end of our journey of the evolution of the deep. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Hi, I'm Callum. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation that I've just done. It's been hard for me to pronounce some of the names of the eras, people who discovered the fossils and the names of the creatures in general because I'm dyslexic so I hope you enjoyed and I hope you've learned something thank you